So what's all this rage with freeze-dried breast milk? Most of us have heard of storing our breast milk in a freezer where we're making sure that it's cold and it's good for up to six months. New guidelines are saying that it's optimal for six months, that most likely it would still be good to use up to 12 months when stored properly in the back of a freezer where it's coldest. But the newest thing on the market right now is freeze drying your breast milk, which means it can preserve your milk for three to 20 years. That's a significant difference. So let's talk a little bit about that process. Sublimation is the fancy scientific word for freeze drying. Basically what they do is they take your breast milk and put it into a chamber and drop the temperature to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They'll then use a vacuum to suck out all of the air, which also removes all of the water, and bada bing bada boom, your breast milk is turned into powder where only the nutrients are left behind and all the water has been sucked out. Companies will then take this powder and put it in airtight sealed bags. Most companies will basically guarantee that if you had sent them 200 ounces of breast milk, they will turn that into 200 ounces of powder that when reconstituted with water will make 200 ounces of breast milk. Your powder, your breast milk is unique to you as is the volume that you sent. So the company will tell you how much water you need per bag to reconstitute your, your breast milk in order to then bottle feed it to your baby. So why would you wanna freeze dry your milk instead of just the usual freezing your breast milk? Well, there's several pros to this method. For one, it can preserve your milk longer than what would just stay in your freezer. So if you have a massive stash that your baby's not going to get through within the recommended amount of time, it can be a great way to preserve your milk for longer. It also reduces the amount of space needed to store your milk. You can get your freezer back and be able to fill up on things from Costco. It's also very convenient. If you're doing a lot of traveling, it would be much easier to travel with powdered formula than all of that liquid. Or if you need to ship it to somebody else across the country or take it with you in the case of moving, it can also be a convenient way to make sure that your milk doesn't go bad in that travel process. It could also be a great option for those who are doing surrogacy or donor milk to be able to get their milk to a wider variety of places. For those who struggle with high lipase in their milk, that's the enzyme that breaks down breast milk with time, some babies won't take breast milk that has high lipase in it. It makes the milk take soapy or metallic. The, um, some brand new kind of anecdotal evidence out there basically says that freeze drying slows down this process. It's helping to take out that enzyme so that breast milk isn't being broken down as much and that some babies will then take that breast milk because the taste is much milder than when it's left in its liquid state. I could also see this as a viable option for those who are diagnosed with something like breast cancer where mastectomy would be recommended, where if they're currently lactating and they want to be able to store that milk for a future baby or future pregnancy after they have their treatments, that it could be a very viable option to have breast milk last significantly longer so that future babies could take advantage of that parent's own breast milk. Um, for some too, it could also be used when you're on an elimination diet. So let's say you discover that your baby has a cow milk protein or soy intolerance and you need to go on an extreme diet, but you have all of this breast milk from before you went on the diet. Some people could be able to freeze dry that breast milk to then feed it later on after their baby outgrows potentially that allergy or intolerance. So these are just some of the benefits that you could potentially see from freeze drying your breast milk. Now let's talk about the cons or the things that should make us go, hmm. We know that the biggest concern as medical professionals and that is that this has not been studied. There really is not much evidence-based research currently on freeze drying breast milk. So we don't know how the freeze drying process changes the nutritional const um, the constituents of your breast milk. We don't know how it changes the vitamins, the fat, and the protein. And as healthcare professionals, we're obviously always concerned about baby's optimal growth and health. So one con or negative is that we just don't have the research. I really believe we will in a couple years as more people do this and as more people study it. But right now that evidence just isn't there. 
Another issue is that breast milk specifically is not pasteurized. That's a heat flashing that kills bacteria in breast milk. And when we're freeze drying breast milk, that process is not done in order to preserve the nutrients of that milk. So there could be bacterial contamination, which would be the same risk as powdered infant formula. So there again could be contamination in making that. We also need to know that you, you have to specifically reconstitute or rehydrate that milk per the formula that whoever freeze dries tells you. So with infant formulas, it's one scoop of powdered formula to two ounces of water, and that is standard over most formula companies. Some companies are a little different, but that tends to be the basic recipe. Whereas with freeze dried breast milk, the company will mark on the bag how many ounces of water to reconstitute that particular bag of freeze dried breast milk. So if you occasionally have too much or too little water when preparing that freeze dried breast milk, won't probably make too much of a difference. But if you're not extremely careful, you could run the risk of baby either having too low of sodium or too high of sodium when reconstituting or things like not enough calories and too much water. So it is just a caution. Um, and those are some of the cons. Again, we just don't have the research quite yet. We don't know how freeze drying will change the nutrient content, although I do believe that we will have more information with time. You're still running a contamination risk and you have to be really careful with your preparation. And of course, the biggest concern is the cost. It can cost anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand dollars to freeze dry your breast milk. While this may not be a problem for some people, it really does act as a barrier for others. So every company will be different and it does depend on how many ounces that you're having them preserve. So if you're really adamant about freeze drying your milk, it's a really cool concept. There are a lot of pros to it, especially again, if you have a massive freezer stash, if you're doing a lot of traveling or you're having some other medical concern with either your baby or yourself where it might be a viable option to have that breast milk prolonged in its shelf life. There's still some concerns over it, but I do think that with time and more research that we will have more answers to those questions. As always, consider consulting with your pediatrician or a healthcare provider before considering any kind of new routine or regime with your breast milk. And if you are going to freeze dry, make sure you leave it to the professionals. There are several companies out there right now. You wanna make sure you're using a quality company with a good reputation and not freeze drying yourself. Please do not attempt this at home. Freeze drying is different than dehydrating. They do work with totally different processes. So don't try to dehydrate your milk thinking it is the same as freeze drying. Now you know.